Hasta la vista, baby. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of this wonderful show I call Thursday Talks. Um, I'm just going to have to quickly get the questions up, because I didn't plan ahead as usual. Um, but I believe it was something to do with um, how I do, basically how do I know what I've paid for an item and, and such. So, I'll just go on to the video. Oh, what's happening? Please enjoy oh. the following night. And, nope, not that one. Oh, where is it? You can never find things when you when you want to find them. Go into video community and then comments. That should be easier. There we go. Right. Okay. Okay. I've got a few questions to go through. Um, right, Garden Speed, who is a regular commenter now on my channel, which is always nice to see, um, asks, Nice sales, but how do you know how much you paid for the item? Oh, and just wondering, would you be able to do a video of how to keep accounting for tax purposes? Um, as in, do you just keep records of spreadsheets, etc.? Well, actually, there's the good thing. I'm going to do that video in this video. Um, I'm going to answer your question and I'm going to give you the video you want. So, thumbs up on that. And if I've got time, if it's running over or whatever, if it's going like 20, 20 minutes or whatever, I probably won't answer uh, the other couple of questions I've got to answer. But don't fret the people who have asked me those questions because I will be answering them next week. And as usual, if you've got a question, just drop it below, and just put, be before the question, just put Thursday Talks, just so I know it's a Thursday Talks question, and then it makes it easier for me when I'm going through the comments. So yeah, if you have a question, pop it below, and right now I'm going to cu cut to my computer screen, and we're going to look at the spreadsheet I use. Hi guys, um, so, I've recorded this once already, um, but yeah, I'm just going to show you my sales ledger, if you like. Um, this is a um, basically a spreadsheet that was created by Michael Taylor. The only way is thrifting is his channel, if you want to check him out. Um, and yeah, this is basically how I document my sales. So if I go over to the question... Um, would you be able to do a video of how you keep account for tax purposes? Um, as in, do you keep records on spreadsheets? This is my spreadsheet. However, this is not just what I do. Um, I also, at the end of the month, which I haven't got on this one, is I basically open up another sheet in the work document and do a profit and loss. Um, but first of all, let's just concentrate on this. So... Yeah, these are my sales down the line. I've got my item title, date of sale, how much paid, and the selling price. I'll get on to how much I paid in the next segment of the video, which I've already recorded. So I'm doing this backwards. Um, but anyway, my PayPal fees, shipping fee, which isn't needed for me because I offer free PMP on all my items, uh, and then my shipping cost. Uh, and then this isn't my net profit because eBay fees and stuff need to come out of that. Um, but as you can see, uh, December's not been a bad month for me. I mean, along this side, you can see clearly I've sort of got like six plus sales a day. Um, got, f I got six on the first. I got five on the second. Third was a good day. I think I got about eight. No, nine actually there. No, eight, sorry, eight on that one, two, three, four. No, nine. Yeah, nine on the, on the third. Fourth, about six again, was it? Yeah. And then it slowed down more recently. Um, I've not updated it in a few days. I do need to update it. Um, but yeah, as, I can, as you can see, I've, I've not had too bad sales. I showed in my sales video a few of these sales, like the tan base plates and stuff. 
managed to make about £14 profit on them. Although I've got to take some eBay fees off that uh, in the P&L at the end of the month. Um, in the profit and loss at the end of the month, I just count my eBay fees as one lump sum rather than filtering it down into all my items. Um, made about 8 quid on the Kaplunk. 8 quid on a FIFA, oh no that's not FIFA, yeah, FIFA Xbox game, um, yeah so not bad, another 8 quid there, 7 quid, yeah not bad, another 8 quid there, um, yeah so it's not too bad actually, uh, but yeah, so then I would do a pre p &L on here, um, now I'm not going to go into what a profit and loss is and how you do it, um, but this is all you need for your sort of personal records, and then you'll need to probably do a, well I, I like to do a P&L um, at the end of the month, because this, what I've adapted this, this did have an eBay fees column in, but because I put my eBay fees um, as one lump cost, and this also had a petrol cost or another other cost column and a packaging cost column, but I do all them as a lump sum in my profit and loss. So I suppose you could probably just get away with having this one spreadsheet, um, and then you've got your net profit right at the bottom down here, um, and then that's it, you, you've got your net profit. However, I like to do a profit and loss here um, and just work it out. Um, I don't know, I just, I just like working it out that way. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's how I do my, my um, sort of accounting, if you like. Um, and then once I've got my net profit for all of the months of the tax year, um, I then add up all my net profit and obviously that's my yearly net profit, so it's very simple to do in that respect. Um, this is really the longest part of it, where you have to input the item name and, and the cost and stuff. And I will show you how I know how much I paid in the next segment of the video, which as I say has been pre-recorded. Um, so yeah, I will cut to the next segment, and please enjoy it. Right then. Next segment of the question, which was, um, how do you know what you paid for an item? Uh, so, there. That is all I am going to show you. I write it down. Um, yes, it may be a bit inefficient, but, yeah, I, I, have, I have showed you in the past. I've got ring binders over there. 12 month period, 12 segments in the ring binder, and... Yeah, I basically, when I get home from a charity shop, uh, a car boot, uh, wh whatever I'm going to, um, even if it was um, a pickup or a friend's house or whatever who is giving me them um, for, for a low amount of money or even for free, I'd write it down. Um, then, what I do is if I've got any receipts with that, so say it was a charity shop, if I've got any receipts with that, I staple the receipts to it as proof of purchase for HMRC. Um, then, when I sell something, if I am not 100% sure of the price, I go over to my ring binder and I quickly flick through and find it. Uh, and then, I tick it off, and that's crucial, because if you don't tick it off, you, you're going to think, oh wait, that one's not sold. Um, I, some, I, I used to write sold next to it, just something I knew, but now I just do a ticking system and I just know what a tick means anyway. Um, and also, with, the, with some of the items as well, if I've got similar items, the more generic items like Operation, where I get maybe a few of them in each month, I will write down any defects with it. So, for example, if it is missing two pieces, and then when it sells or when, when at one of the operations sell, I may have three listed, I then go to the description in, in the um, item, and it may say missing two smaller, smaller body parts. And then I go to my 
binder folder thing um, and then I would usually remember the month I purchased it in so then I'll go to that month section in the 12 uh, in the 12 month binder thing um, and then flick through these little pieces of paper um, in there and well just look through quickly it doesn't take as long as you think once you get a bit better at it um, and then find the operation with the two missing parts because the other one might be complete and the other one might um, have four missing parts um, there is a bit of a worry with this system that I haven't encountered yet that if I get two operations in that are both missing two parts for different prices um, but it wouldn't matter too much which one of those I ticked off because um, obviously I've still paid the full amount because if I put down one operation I paid £2, the other operation I paid £3 if I tick off the £2 one and it's actually the £3 one then the next time the other one sells I'm going to tick off the opposite one so I've still paid the same amount of money for those two games but I've just done it the opposite way around if, if you sort of get my drift um, so there's not too much worry with this system it is it can be a bit long-winded and I may be thinking of doing it on my computer from now on I am debating that a lot more now and just have everything on my computer however I do know that I've got to have keep all my receipts so that's going to be a file there anyway so it's not like I'm going to gain anything from doing it on my computer other than maybe maybe a, a, a couple of minutes faster I don't know it might be a couple of minutes faster if I can get it set up in Excel that it's a bit more um, if there's like formulas in there or whatever it may be a lot faster but I'm not sure I'm going to have to look into that but yeah that is how I do it if I am 100% sure of the item cost, and I mean 100% sure, like there is no doubt, then I will just put it in. And generally, because I don't pay more than £2 for anything anyway, if I do get it wrong, it's, you know, it's, it's 50p. So, I mean, the figures are going to be distorted very, very, very minor. And obviously with HMRC, they want it to, they, they say, uh, the end of the tax return uh, you have to tick a box basically saying uh, these figures are to the best that uh, are to correct to the best of my knowledge so there are there is a little bit of leeway you can, you can get away with if you've you know if you just from human incompetence if you like so if I do get it wrong by 50p it's not mega and I know I've always made profit on my items however I do consult this. If I am not 100% sure, I consult this. Um, so yeah, that is my secret weapon, a piece of paper. for my. And this is like basically an old, old style purchase ledger, really. Um, but just not all in one book, obviously. Um, I should maybe get it all in one book. That might be better. That, yeah, that might be better actually, if I do it, instead of like ripping a piece of paper off and stapling the receipts to it, if I just did it all in one book and stapled the receipts to each page, however that book could probably be then massive, but I anyway, I don't know. But there's a few things I'm going to try out with that, but I do, I, I, I'm not sure about the fact that I would recommend my purchase ledger system, but I definitely would recommend the sales spreadsheet I just showed you. That is perfect. It really is. Michael's done a great job on it. Um, I have adapted it slightly, uh, just taken some columns out that I don't need and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'd recommend getting that if you haven't. Uh, you can go over to his channel, The Only Way is Thrifting, and you can download that spreadsheet, enter all your sales in. It does it all for you. It's all formulated, so it, it works out your pay off fees, eBay fees, etc and then it gives you your profit um, and I would also recommend maybe doing some sort of rudimentary P&L profit and loss account at the end of each month just so you're doubly sure that there's that, that you're making money um, the way I do it is a bit odd I, I, I do sort of I, I don't I include my eBay fees 
uh, at the end of the month as a bulk cost rather than filtering them down into all my items on the spreadsheet but that way just seems easier for me and it it doesn't change anything it's the exact same fees um, I do include my PayPal fees in the spreadsheet and stuff as you've seen but anyway I'm, I'm just gonna waffle now so yeah I hope that has helped um, as I say I would consult your own mind and do it the way you feel with the purchase ledger um, I personally wouldn't recommend this way especially if you're going to be full-time or whatever um, you don't want to spend you know probably I probably do this probably put a few hours into it each sort of month or so writing down and stuff and if you're a full-timer you don't want to be doing that and that's why I'm looking into doing it on the computer and stuff just to get that little bit more efficient because I would love to do this full time. Obviously it would be after university which is another couple of years off yet. Um, so I've got plenty of time to mess around with it, play around with different things with the accounting, play around with different things as regard to what sells and um, play around with Amazon FBA a bit more which I'm doing in the new year. Um, so yeah, I, I'm just sort of finding my feet and I don't want to give any bad advice to you. So I've just laid out what I do. It's your choice to take on board that information, do it completely differently. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, I, w I would recommend getting that spreadsheet uh, if you are just starting off. It's just, it's just perfect. I got it when I was starting off. And it's just so easy. And as I say, Michael's done just a, a great job on it. So anyway, I will um, leave it there, I think, today. I have got another couple of questions. And I'm very sorry. I'll have to do them another day. Um, I've got a question from Miss Beauty 79 And I've got a question from Leonard, Leonard Estrella. And I believe Estrella's a beer, isn't it? I don't know. Uh, you can comment that one. Is it a beer or isn't it? I don't know. Um, but yeah, um, I did say it will be on the list on Thursday. However, it's getting too long, this video. Um, although, actually, it is sort of quite an easy question. Um, yeah, okay, I'll just quickly answer this one. I'm sorry for taking up all your time. And it's probably past the 20 minutes now. Um, yeah, questions for... This is Leonard Estrella. Question for Thursday's vid. Uh, for the heavier port parcels like books and those type heavy items, do you use Royal Mail or other courier services like UPS or Hermes? Um, I have purposefully sold, all my, if I have a bundle of books, I purposefully don't go over the two kilograms to um, go to Royal Mail. The reason I do this is because the post office near me is literally three or four minute walk um, and it's much easier for me to go there the only Hermes drop-off point I know around here is about five or six miles away um, I do drive myself and I could do that but I just think if I, I probably would work out more beneficial cost wise to do that but it's a bit more effort and I don't know. I don't know. I may think of it in the future. But at the moment, to answer your question, I purposefully uh, bundle books in fours or sixes uh, to make sure I don't go over the two kilograms. Because as we all know, as soon as you go over the two kilograms on Royal Mail, you get a massive charge of £13.75, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, it goes up from £2.80 to then to £4.89 £4 and then from there, weirdly enough, it goes all the way to £13.75. I, I just don't get it, but um, yeah, so uh, that answers that question. I will be doing FBA in the new year and I probably won't be selling as much on eBay. I probably still have 100 items on, but probably not 170 or 180 as I usually do um, and I'll just really put my effort into an FBA that's what I'm hoping to do um, 
just seeing some of the other people do it, like Sean and, and Sam, uh, Tez Nutkins, um, and Nick as well. Um, it, it just... It makes sense. I'd, I'd love to do it and, and it gets stock out of the house. And as you know, I'm sure I've mentioned before, my mum is not too best pleased with me doing this in my bedroom. So she wants, she, she's all for FBA once I took the time to explain it to her. Um, but yeah, yeah, so I'm doing that. And obviously then I'll be selling less on eBay. So I'd, I think if I'm selling less, I'll be... I'll obviously not want to travel the five miles to the Hermes store, the, the store that actually does Hermes even, um, because just if I have like four parcels or something a day, um, at the moment I'm doing like 10 parcels a day because it's Christmas and it might actually be more beneficial cost wise for me just to drive there to get the postage at a slight bit cheaper, um, but today I've not got the car because my mum's at work. So, you know, and, and that's the other thing, if I don't have the car, because um, I share the car with my mum, it, it's, it, you know, it's just a bit, I have to go to the Royal Mail, I have to go Royal Mail anyway, so it just, I, I just don't see the point really with, with what's going on in my life, with the way it works and stuff. And obviously going to college, uh, not college, university. I do a university course at the college I'm at to, to live at home. That's what, um, that's why I'm at home, if you don't know. Um, I, I'm not in university. I don't have halls or anything. There is a university course on at the college. Um, and that, and then I just do it, you know, go into the college, do the, do the lectures there. And then come home and do the work at home. So I am off quite a bit. Um, well, I say off, but I mean doing eBay, um, which is a, a, a massive task actually, um, especially fitting in with uni work. But anyway, I'm rambling again. So uh, yeah, I don't use Hermes or UPS. I have used them before in the past, very very rarely. Um, but I just don't think with the way, you know, the amount of time I have the car. Um, the situation of the situation of um, how close the Royal Mail shop is to me, the, the um, post office, how close that is to me. I just think I'd rather just do that. Um, but yeah, anyway, and I'm, I'm what ram rambling again. Uh, sorry, l uh, Miss Beauty seventy nine. I'll get to your question next week. And as always. Drop your questions below with Thursday Talks. Just put at the start of the question, Thursday Talks, and then maybe a colon or something, and then your question. Uh, and drop that below right now if you have one. Um, yeah, Miss Beauty 79, I'll answer yours next week. And yeah, please stay tuned. I'm hoping to grow the channel a lot more. I'm doing a lot more vids, hopefully, and I'm sure you'll have seen over the last week, so I've sort of stepped up the vids a little bit anyway. Um, and any ideas, questions, comments, again, down in the comment section. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, down there or down there, I don't know which way. And uh, hit subscribe, I think it's down there, I don't know, it may be down there. Um, yeah, I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.